everybody. Welcome to the series premiere of Lim Kopi Podcast. My name is Kok Kao and this podcast is brought to you by Sequentia. In case you're wondering what is this podcast all about, uh, this is a show where I invite my close friends, acquaintances, you know, sometimes just long lost contacts as guests of mine. And, you know, we'll just be talking about you know, just how we met each other, you know, our memories together, and also to just to catch up in life in general. And yeah, we'll be talking about random stuff as well. And well, this is the first episode of the series, and we have a very special guest with us. And you know, he is the half behind the recently rebranded Heart to Heart Stories. Yen Tong is a successful videographer and photographer. Together with his talented wife, they both cover the corporate and weddings with their primary focus of crafting unique storytelling for their clients. Last year, he created a podcast, Let's Get Creative, where he invites creatives and professionals to talk about anything and everything about creative processes. Alright, welcome to the show, Yen Tong. Hey, thanks for inviting me today yeah. for your first ever episode. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Really, thank you so really much. proud of you that you managed to kick things off, especially like right now. Somehow you do live, wow, that's even better. I, I think it's because it's a circuit breaker moment, so no choice. Lah. I mean, plus trying out a new format where you know we can do a bit of live while doing this whole circuit breaker itself. But how are you in general? Like, the last time I saw you was like quite a few months ago, I think about two, three months ago. How have we been since then? Um, it's a little bit tricky because uh, ever since like late January, we all know that this virus is gonna hit on our shores like quite quite soon nah, when they are mm. getting Singaporeans back to Singapore. So uh, that's where I start to feel the pinch in terms of like okay. the business part. Then uh, slowly I have to during that moment that one two months I was uh, also talking to our friend Stanley uh, about how to navigate uh, my my own video business because. Oh. Knowing that video business is a more, it's more of a service. There's a lot of service involved, so a lot of face to face. So we decided to kind of, uh, at least for me, I decided to change the, the business model. Uh, overall, like I have to think of like what I can still do and what I can't do, and what I can bring value to my clients. Uh, so that I can serve, I can continue to serve them. I can continue to advise them. So I changed from more of a videographer that press a record button to more of like a strategies like the media media strategies because I still want to I like the service part lah. I, I cannot give up the service part. though I still like the creative and the creation but I feel like I need to grow as a business owner I can't just stay, stay still yeah but wedding is definitely affected lah. so there's no way we can do uh, but to continue to churn out content for our, for our couples lah. How about that's you? Definitely. That, I mean, that, that's great that we are adapting to the whole situation itself. I mean, this is a, it's, it's, it's really terrible. And uh, knowing that the total cases right now, as of yesterday, was about 12,000. So how are you coping with the whole circuit breaker in terms of, because um, right now we're all stuck at home. So what have, what have you been doing at home actually? We did a lot. So uh, recently we did, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether you have seen the, the one that we, we dressed up and we, we did a photo shoot at home. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I also got the community. So I went to talk to a few photographers and videographers and asked them, like, hey, want to kind of hop on to this, uh, this particular video project. So I wanted to create this to educate the couples, but also bring in the community together. Uh, to kind of like be part of this thing uh, because since everybody is stuck at home there's a little bit more time a little bit more uh, more space to do things so I wanted to kind of like bring value uh. because to me I've been I always try to bring value to every yeah. single person that I meet so I try my best to implement uh, and I, I'm i glad that it turns out okay uh, people are liking it and I'll continue to churn out at least me and my wife will continue to churn out content uh, but it's a little bit uh, stressful because when you're stuck at home too long, uh, there's no breather, you will have a little bit of anxiety and uh, people get more stressed out more easily, I don't know why. Yeah. I've seen like the chats on WhatsApp groups are a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're also facing it, but yeah, that's how I'm feeling right like, during this period. I think for myself, um we have been enjoying this circuit breaker because we can catch up on like shows, or movies, you know, just oh. our own personal time because we don't really have a lot of personal time. Even 
even before this circuit breaker and now that we are home most of our time and we can just enjoy you know this you know just enjoy being ourselves like. but I would say that um, it doesn't apply the same to everybody in the world uh, I mean we do see a lot of cases where people are going you know insane and I think that you know mental awareness is important during this entire circuit breaker as well like. so if, if you are feeling you know troubled if you are if you're feeling that uncomfortable uh, if you're feeling you know wanting to speak up to somebody about you know, how you've been feeling you know please feel do so as well like. but I think uh, that's that's that is something that it's a whole different topic to talk about but sure uh, anyway before we move on um, we have a little segment called Kopi Talk and it's a little icebreaker segment where um, um, where we have the guest and myself to just bring in our favourite drinks and you know unfortunately because of the circuit breaker we, we can't do a toast in real life but yeah. we can do it virtually of course yeah. but uh, of course throughout the entire show we can be drinking our favourite drinks lah. Uh, so for Yen Tong I ask you to bring your favourite drink but tell us why do you like your this drink a lot is there like a story behind it Oh, uh, not really a story particular, but uh, I can tell you I've been drinking AC for like super long now. Uh, oh yeah. So uh, it's always been my staple drink. I even put it on my profile, on the website profile, and say that I love AC. There's no way that I'll, I'll give up AC. I rather give up coffee than I like, give up AC. So but, so you're more you're more you're more tea than the coffee person. Yeah, but recently I've been drinking more coffee now because I've been. I had to wake up a little bit earlier to do a lot of things, so uh, I was, I swing towards more coffee. But I, I, I still, I still prefer to go out and buy. But then now with this COVID thing, it's a bit, it's impossible, lah. Yeah, yeah, it's really challenging. But have you tried this, uh, this trend, this coffee trend? I don't know what's it called, but I don't know to pronounce that word. But uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. This. Oh, this the Dalgona coffee, coffee yeah. Thing. Yeah, the Dalgona coffee, yes. Uh, uh, we did person. once and failed, so we are trying to do once more because I think the only reason why we failed was we didn't put enough sugar. You know the three okay, in one packet, right? The sugar actually uh-huh. should be more than that in order to make the make the foam more steady and more sturdy. Yeah, or we know we, does, we learn from our lesson. But how does it work though, actually? You have to, you know, like you have to keep whisking it so that it can, it can create a foam. If not, it's just a liquid squash. So you have to keep doing it. Uh, but in order to make it more sturdy, the sugar must be enough. That means you'll get diabetes uh, if you keep drinking. So yeah, this is one of the. But after we taste it, actually, it's not very. I think it's not very. Uh, it's not very wise to keep drinking because it's very tiring. Unless you have a mixer, then that's different. Uh, I see. I see. I see. Uh, for myself, I'm drinking uh, soya bean. Uh, my favorite brand uh, from it is the Nutri Soy. So the blue color thingy, the, the container thing. So I, I love that particular um, brand is because like the soya bean just tastes just nice. It's thick enough, but it's but it's there's so much flavor in it. And uh, I refuse to drink from any other brands except for that. I, I'm not I'm not sponsored by that, but. But yeah, it's not like you get sponsored by them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not sponsored by them, but but when I go to my favorite uh, soya bean uh, drink, I would usually just go for that. Otherwise, um, there's a, a couple of stalls in Singapore, but unfortunately they're closed <laughs> because of circuit breaker, so I can't really get to them, but I think it's the closest that I can get a, a pretty good quality soya bean right now. Uh. Yeah, other than that, I like, I like Milo as well, so in some episodes, I might be drinking Milo. Some episodes are maybe drinking soya bean instead. So my favorite drink just toggles between the both of them, la. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Let's let's go on to our our main topics uh, for today. Uh, today we're just mainly talking about how we first met and also about because talking about Yen Chong, he is uh, recently rebranded uh, Heart to Heart Stories and also his dynamic working with his wife as well. And other than that, uh, Yen Chong will be giving a bit like, you know, just tips in general and advices on, you know, on like perfect dates and that kind of stuff. Uh. So we're talking about more about that in a uh, okay. later part of this podcast. So, uh, so uh, in the very first part, we'll talk about, you know, how, how do you still remember how we first met? Just wondering. First met as in both of us? Uh? Yeah, the both of us, like me and you. Uh, can I say, I keep thinking that we, we met in the event, right? Is that event? Eh? 
Yeah, we, we did. We did. Yeah, it's the last year's uh, the one with the one with who uh Stanley introduced me to you. Uh, yeah, Stanley. We, yeah. What's that? What's that event called? Stories, uh? Yeah, stories. Yeah, stories. <laughs> yeah. So there was Nas Daily there, and I know you are you are literally fanboying him. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> I, I just find him cool. But I think Stanley was much more a fanboy towards him than me. I, I just said like, because I I seen his videos a couple of times like online here and there. So it, it's nice to see somebody that's on online that in, in the real per, in the real life. That's so, true. Yeah, I mean, even for yourself, I think it would be quite interesting to see uh, online personality um, in real life as well. Uh. But I think Stan, because I was queuing up with Stan Lee to take pictures with him, and Stan Lee was like so idolizing towards him. But for myself, I'm like, oh, okay. Not say that he's not just another person to me, but just that it's cool to see him in real life. That's it. Yeah, I have, I have met respects for him, and he has done vlogging for the for the for one thousand days in a row, and it's just really interesting to see how he has grown from the very yeah. first day to the thousandth day. But uh, in the event itself, he was really humble. He was really honest, and he was really supportive. He gave so much advices, not just for myself. And I, I'm pretty sure that if you did talk to him, uh, he pretty much gave you a lot of advices as well. And uh, when I was with him, uh, I was with him. Stanley was talking to him a lot. And I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what Stanley did talk to talk to Nate Daly uh, with, but I'm pretty sure the conversation was really fruitful. Uh. Yeah, I think most of his tips are very very handy. Uh, yeah. I think something that a lot of our our age group people do really have is like uh, the discipline and the determination. I think what makes him different is he believes in one cause so hard that he does it every single day. He practices it. He preach it and he practice it. So he don't just like say only, but he really do what he meant to do all the way, even when things are going against him. But then again, he's a very, very uh, smart uh, technical person in terms of like how Facebook utilize videos and stuff. Like you, you can be very good at filming, you can be very, very good at editing, but if you don't know how to utilize like whatever platforms they have, in terms of optimization and everything, that's where you lose up. So you might be putting a lot of effort, but you might not reap the effect. And so after doing similar things like what Nas Daily did, right, I, I can understand like it's actually not the, not not easy to do that one minute. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. I don't know how he pulled it off, but I, I think I can't even survive like the first tenth of like the the, the thousand days, you know. If, if I don't do this like every day I'll go crazy after a while. So I mean, even Casey Neistat, he tried to do like daily vlogging as well, but he, he kind of got exhausted, not because like he, he's uh, not physically exhausted, but he's creatively exhausted by it. So to see how Nas Daily did it for a thousand days and still can be creatively, you know, enjoy his process, I think it's really interesting to see as, as a case study itself. Yeah. yeah, but any, anyway, so we had this event, uh, the, the stories event, and we I did ask you about your, your podcast, and uh, because you shared with me during uh, during the event itself, you said that, oh, we're starting out this podcast, and at that time, I was actually having some thoughts about coming up with a podcast already. Uh, oh. It's been the idea of mine since I was in national service, but um, yeah, and I thought that, you know, listening to your podcast, the Let's Get Creative, it was so interesting. And uh, now that you're in the second season, congratulations to you. And <laughs> I know it hasn't been easy. And I'm surprised that you, you know, I'm, I'm really genuinely happy for you that you could do it up to the second season. Uh. And I just started out my first season. So we shall see how this thing goes about. Uh. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it takes a while. Uh. Usually the first season, to me the first season is really just exploring. Uh, I have no... I have no certain structure to it. Though, yeah, you need to have certain interview structures and stuff. But when I talk about like a certain team, I don't have a certain team. So that's when I, someone asked me like, "Hey, uh, do you know exactly who you are serving?" And I, I can't, I can't answer that. I really got downloaded. So that that makes me think like, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm doing something good, but am I targeting the right people? And am I giving the value to the right people? Because the people that don't see value." They wouldn't really want to listen to what I'm saying. So that's that's where I feel like oh I shouldn't just aim at the general public. 
because the general public wouldn't want, wouldn't even care who who I am. But then I would want to give value like someone like you that really will appreciate, really will understand, really will grow with me as a as a creator. I think that will that will be my like this year's goal for the podcast for season two. Yeah. Yeah. So great that you are coming up with second season, and uh, I wish you all the best for that. And Thanks. I hope you have a better structure and you have a better mind on what to do for your second season. Uh. And yeah, so you invited me for one of the episodes, and uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed this that episode. Even up to this day, like uh, I I still watch I still watch the episode, but when I remember when it first came out. Oh my goodness, I couldn't even get through the first 10 minutes of it because I was particularly so embarrassed by my own voice. Because my voice is really deep. So I kind of like my voice in real life, but when I when I hear it through like uh, audio recording form, I like be always cringing about it. But I think <laughs> after hearing myself for the entire podcast, um, it was really fruitful and it was so interesting. It's very insightful to know that you know, my voice is this deep so I don't know how do you survive through uh, editing your own podcast and even editing your own videos because you tend to edit a, you tend to you know video yourself a lot like in terms of challenges in terms of you know, vlogs here and there so h- how do you get through you know just listening to your own voice uh, okay one tip that I do video for so long right, uh, is don't care what the public thinks about you uh, and usually when you're putting yourself out there right Think of the benefit that you, you can give to whoever that's watching, even if it's one person. Like, I always tell myself, if, at least as if there's one person listening to my podcast, or one person that watch my podcast, uh, that would be good enough for me to continue to do. Uh, because if you think too much about how the public thinks about your voice, how you present yourself, then you might lose your indiv- individuality, which I'm still struggling because uh, people that are doing coaching will say that, oh, uh, you shouldn't be so singlish. You shouldn't be like, uh, like you, you have to present yourself so that the general public, uh, the whole world, where, when they're watching, if they're watching your content, will understand you better. If you're talking about Singlish, then they may not understand. Or if you talk about yeah, that's something true. that's local, then you'll lose your international market. So if you start to think about, there's a lot of technical, there's a lot of things that you worry about, then you will never start. First, you never start, you'll dread, then you'll never do. So uh, I would say that you shouldn't, when you are starting to do content, right? content generation, podcast or whatever video just don't care what people do tell you first you just do first and you churn out then you see the feedback I mean the feedback is for you to kind of tweak things here and there but I believe there will be a group of people that like your content so mm. swing towards that side swing towards the people that appreciate then you will you'll, you'll create better like you won't you won't get like slowed down by other people that are saying that don't really care because if they don't really care they won't bother watching so you shouldn't worry yeah. so I mean like to, to understand what you're trying to say is that just define your own personality and then just trick your personality from there because there's, there's I mean there's a fine balance between you know having a personality and having to be professional as well so I mean sometimes for myself when I'm doing videos when I, when I do vlogs and like that I do have to find a kind of balance and it's not it's not easy at all because you have to you have to be presentable in a way that you know people would generally enjoy it but at the same time you can't you can't lose your own personality to the point that this is not Kok Kao or this is not Yen Chong. So there's a yeah. certain balance that we have to find a way. La. And I think yeah. that's, that's great because I, I think when I, when I watch your videos, like, I, can, I can relate that, oh, this is definitely Yen Chong. This is Yen Chong's style. This is how Yen Chong will behave if I'm with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite true that's why I prefer podcast format or a slightly longer format for my own content generation if I'm doing education uh. because I feel like if you give me more time then I can translate my personality more you know sometimes now they are doing like a lot of flashy like wow bam 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 you know every few oh. seconds change screen or like, you know like add another transition or like you know tell yeah. you a lot of details but unless you are a very good copywriter I wouldn't recommend that because I only feel like my content will shine more if I take my time and really explain stuff and some of mine is more technical like a lot of the creative stuff is really more technical but when, yep. when you're talking about technical you have to stitch back to like the creative so uh, it takes time for me to explain that and because I'm self-taught so I don't have that kind of like LaSalle or like SOTA's kind of like technical uh, lingo or like their own media lingo 
I can only tell you like based on my own experience, which is a little bit harder to explain. Uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well. Even for myself, when, when I do like filming, when I do like even like now I'm doing podcasting, like this is my first first venture into it. It's a lot of self taught and it's also a lot of you know asking the right questions and asking the wrong question as well because that's when you learn the most from there. And I think that self taught it's a discipline that that not a lot of people can abide to. But mm. it's the most fruitful thing to learn from instead of you know just getting the answers from. It's like it's like you don't know the answers but but you need to find a way to how to get into it. Yeah. So I think that's the that's the most like um, it's like a learning journey itself. And I, I kind of enjoy it as well and I'm sure you do as well. Uh. Yeah. Definitely so enjoy. Now, oh yeah, that, that's for sure. Um now coming to a podcast itself, um now that you are celebrating your second season of uh, Let's Get Creative, is is there like a reason why you got into podcasting the first reason? Like how oh, do you got into podcasting? Nice. Uh, for people that don't know me, eh, I've been listening to podcasts for two years, three years already. Like while I'm doing my, when I'm still working a full-time job, nine to five, my, my highlight is actually like uh, the journey from my home to my workplace. And that's where I listen to like an episode of podcast. Then on the way back, that's where I love it. Or when I'm going to lunch, even when I'm like, basically all my downtime when I'm packing the store on my, uh, in the museum, uh, that's where I li- just plug in my earpiece and just listen to podcast episodes. That educate me a lot. And I, when wow. I say a lot, it's a lot. Like I listen to business podcasts, I listen to videographer that we turn into business. So there's a lot of tips that I learned, right? It's literally from them as a videographer, how they create into a company, like a production set, how they talk to clients, how they network, how they <clears throat> do their accounts. So all these things you plug from there and you when I see them like kind of articulate that whole hour of like content, it's very soothing in my ears. It's like music. Oh. So yeah, so I can I'm a visual person, but then I can, I also love the audio side of things. That's why I think video suits me a lot because the video and the audio thing makes me learn much faster. I cannot just see words or like a chunk of stuff. So I guess like this is something that draws me into it. Then I tell myself like, hey, uh, since I like listening to podcasts, right, then why not bring this concept into Singapore? Because two, three years ago, podcast in Singapore wasn't a, wasn't a thing yet. Only recently, if you see like a lot of YouTubers, they start to create YouTube uh, podcast content, like yeah. uh, Raya and Sylvia, yeah. NOC, then like yeah. the other rest of the people, they are start to creating podcasts this year or actually late last year. So when you- This year or last year, yeah. Right. Yeah, it was like a trend start to coming up. So I feel like uh, I I came in late. La. I, I, I was a listener during that time, but as a creator, I came in a little bit later. Because Singapore is a little bit late in terms of adoption, like when there's yeah. a new new trend coming out, right? And I feel like the podcast content actually is much golden as to compare to those 10 minutes video. Right? You can literally learn a lot just based on that. But you need to really focus. Right? You cannot just do other things, you really have to listen through. Yeah. yeah. That's how I, I mean, go into podcast. Right? Oh, that's, that's cool. That's an interesting story, background. Uh, like, even for myself, like, I do listen to podcasts. Uh, podcasts like chronically in terms of like when I'm doing editing when I'm traveling from you know, home to work or maybe I'm just traveling to places to places and I think it's really a good companion as you travel around or as you do your own things it just helps to view, fill up the void in, in, in yourself when, yeah. when you're just trying to keep yourself occupied and um, it just brings out a lot of insights to the world that's happening in, in around you and uh, it just this cheers me up every day uh, to, to just hear a very good episode of a podcast. And for yourself is that um, like you, you, you travel a lot, so that's why you, you got into podcasting. That's how you got into podcasting, you, you listen to a lot. And uh, is there any particular like um, podcast or series that, that really struck into you a lot? And if, if so, is there, like a, is there like a tip that I've learned a lot from, from that podcast itself? Oh, okay. Uh, there is two podcasts, but I'm just going to highlight one for you. Okay? Uh, it's called How to Feel Weddings. Literally, How to Feel Weddings. The the title itself joined me because I was intrigued to go into weddings uh, uh, two years back. So I wanted to learn exactly 
how people price their weddings, how they talk to their clients, uh, how they create um, like marketing and their website, how important is all these human relationships are, uh, how to work with vendors. Like you might think that all over business just for yourself, but then uh, could you implement yourself into the community? Could you, could you work with other vendors that may be your competition, but you know there's actually ways that you can work with your competition that can actually lead to more sales, but you really must embrace, you, you, when you listen to all this educational stuff, like you must be open-minded. Like. You cannot have your own set of like uh, beliefs already, then when you go into it, you just like keep, keep denying it and stuff. I felt like podcast gave me a chance to really open up my eyes to a lot of things. And I, f- I feel like I'm a sponge. And I can just like listen to a lot of things every day. Then I feel like uh, I don't waste every minute. Because I cannot stand if like, I got a lot of free time and I don't self-improve. Then I feel like I never do much. And and this is my weakness also because uh, I, I, I cannot sit still. I need to do some stuff. I need to like, you know, create. Someone now I'm self-employed. So even worse. Yep. Yeah, I need to fill out a lot of gap. Okay, so we'll talk about that in, in a moment's time. Uh, especially with how you're self-employed, you're being... I, I, pers- I would say that you're not really a freelancer, but you're more of a, your own business owner as well. But we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but we're still talking about you know podcasting in general. Lah. So that time when, when I, was have, uh, I was on your podcast itself, a session of yours, um, how is it? <laughs> Just wondering... Uh, how is it like uh, to do a podcast with me on your show and now that you're on my show right now? Uh, first of all, you're not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen uh, way worse guests. Uh, but I'm not going to really? name drop anyone. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, that, that day was okay. You you came in. Okay, everybody start the first 15 minutes confirmed is a little bit uh, cold. Cold uh, and technically we didn't have a proper conversation before the podcast. It was yeah. all through Instagram messages. So yeah. I remember you were just telling me, hey, hey uh, how's your podcast? And you say, yeah. then you just asked me, hey, is there any chance that I can be like pop by to be a guest or something? I would love to join, that kind of thing. And I'm very open to it because during that time, I was just like, whoever that came into my way or we feel like I can click with the person, if I can talk well with the person, I'll definitely just let them be in the, in the show. Because partly I don't have a theme and second you were quite close to what I'm doing in terms of like video production, video producing, content creation. So and someone you love to create content. So uh for me I love uh people that put in initiative to really bring value to people, especially your Instagram. I think now I still don't know how to pronounce the <laughs> the IG handle. <laughs> Are you talking about my photography series? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, series. yeah, yeah. Because I mean, never read now because I, I did talk about that briefly in uh, in your podcast itself. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it again because it's gonna be repeated content. But oh, I'd like to talk, visit uh, visit my podcast if you wanna know about visit, your visit, visit his podcast, podcast for the continuation of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I did talk about my photography series. I think you were quite touched by it because I didn't really talk about that in specifics. Um, prior to that podcast itself, I think you were quite inspired by it. Even for myself, like even when I look back at, at the whole photography series, it's just so inspiring to know how much I've grown as a person. I know. And as I know. as a photographer as well, from the very first image all the way to the current image right now. And the latest image I'm actually I'm actually really proud of it right now. But sure. Um yeah, the the, the podcast itself it was really fun and now that I'm I'm really honored to have you on my show right now. Nice, so, thanks, man. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, we are off the first part of the podcast where we talk about more about just us in general, but now we're talking more about yourself. And now, uh, this one you're talking about more about your your your, your you're not self-employed. So mm. tell us more about what you actually really do. Do as in what I do in my own business? Yeah, yeah your own business actually. Okay, uh, for this year, I guess, uh, it's a little bit different. Because uh, all along I've been running a model of like, uh, at the start, it was just video producing. So uh, I work with clients uh, on the execution part. So if you, can, if you know a lot of videographers, they are there to be briefed by either the director or the producer. Or if they don't have budget, it's mostly the marketing team or something. Uh, but I noticed that there's some limitation to it uh, because I can't really execute what I want. It's more what your client wants. 
So I elevate myself uh, slowly into a position where I work with marketing teams, I work with digital marketers, and that's where I can put my own creative value into their project. In return, it's actually my project. So we work in a kind of a three-way, a client, digital marketer, and me. So after a while of working with that kind of vibe, I kind of like it because I, I know I can grow with them. Uh, rather than just like being hired to shoot like oh you're here to shoot the interview go and figure out the light and just do the technical part is fun but if you, you as a creator if you can't input anything into a project right i feel that uh you can still learn but you don't learn fast enough and yeah. uh then i've slowly become a media strategist like a social media strategist where i don't work with digital marketers i work with my current set of clients and work with them like how how they should post, when they should post, what's the duration that is more optimized. I have to learn all these little lingo here and there that help my app, help my clients reach better audience. Then until now, I feel like the transition was good, right? Just in time, just in time for this uh this crisis. So yeah, yeah. yeah so now I can become a little bit offline, a little bit like off the set by itself, which is good for this year because you you can't do any set. But I'm slowly shifting to like, how can I still do my production at home? How can I still bring value to my clients at home? So for the next few weeks, I'll be trying out like, uh, shooting an ad at home. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing a behind the scene how to shoot an ad at home. Like uh, recently, I have a friend, his name is Jason. I think he's one of, he's one of my guests in my podcast. Uh, he was talking about coronavirus and stuff. Then recently, he, yep. he had been doing a series. So almost every day, he do one advertisement not sponsored, not paid. He creates like a 30 seconds video or something. And he really proved like you don't need a production set to shoot an ad or to shoot like a FAQ or something. And that part inspires me a lot. And I asked him, I straight away messaged him. I was like, hey dude, I love your work. Like, can you like tell me exactly what's the process? How was the work through? Because I, I, I came from a storytelling uh, area. I'm not very versatile in the commercial area that ads. So when I see such work, it always inspires me a lot. I like how the hell do you even think of like four sequ- uh, sequential act that is purposefully created and storyboarded just to shoot. And because I don't come from a production set, so I don't really know all this lingo. I know you need these things, but everything is in my head. So when I'm shooting things, it's more of like a sequence in my head. But I need it to translate into something that is tangible, like a paper that's written down or something. Uh, and that's where I learned from him because I, I'm drawn towards this kind of like projects nowadays. Like I want to create things at home that's as good as a production set. So uh yeah, this is like this year's model uh to help my clients and also help all myself, my, my own branding. How can I still do content at home? Like, because so now we are all stuck at home, right? And I actually love the limitation of like uh being thrown towards us, like okay, now now we can't do anything else, like we gotta think of ways and means to go and figure it out which is a good thing because now everybody's on reset if you notice like now big companies cannot market as how they market most of the time yeah. and a lot of the small players can actually be on the level playing field everybody is like start with zero and that's where the best time for your clients or your SMEs to come into place I love it yeah, this is this actually ironically can be the best time for, for all small companies actually. Because yeah. you know, like, like what you mentioned, uh, everybody has the same playing field. So anybody can be the, the next big player soon. And uh, I just like how that you know, we're having these kind of restrictions right now, but this this is the restrictions that allow us to see what can we play with and how can we creatively advance forward in the in for this um, this virus itself. Lah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of companies right now, they are doing a lot of interesting things, uh, a lot of uh, campaigns and a lot of viral campaigns, you know, to push itself forward and mm. become the next big player right now. Yeah, I, I really like it. It's, it's like, you know, among this crisis, we still see a lot of positive things and we do, we do see a lot of uh, creative things happening right now in the world. Uh. And uh, even for yourself, as, as, as being your own boss, uh, I imagine it must be very tough, you know, to always, you know, give not just to seed up for clients, but also to source for clients, and you know, to give up um, a lot of feed, um, feedback to, you know, um, and also uh, to give a content strategy to a lot of uh, the clients right now. So it must have been really easy for yourself. 
And uh, what is it really like to to be as like your own boss yourself, lah? Um, it's tough, lah. Uh, you hmm. really must wear every single hat that you see on a production set. Uh, you can call me a director, you can call me a producer, you can call me a sound man, you can call me yeah. a graphic artist, you can call me an editor. Uh, I basically wear every single one of them, and I'm I feel like I'm still in a learning phase, like. Uh, I can give value to every single department, uh, but I'm still not a master of one yet. Uh, I still feel like it's a good a, a good space for me to first save costs for your client because you're literally hiring just one person. Second yeah. is you get to play with a lot of things. I get a touch with audio, I get to play with visual, but if you're in the production set, you're limited to your role and uh, not much chance to be playing with new things unless uh, whoever that's in charge give you the chance to lah. and I'm very thankful for that that I managed to really play with every single department of course some departments I would really like lah, like the finance part and you know where to do your accounts and stuff and that part forced me to force out force me to be really like go and approach problems like to me a business owner right is really a problem solver so it's like there's like 101 things for you to go and solve so it's for you to go and figure out how to do it. If the video is just like, uh, it's just that, oh, uh, I'm just good at it. But how am I going to make the business sustain? I think a lot of people always do their creative work, right? Without thinking that. They didn't scale their business. They're just charging more expensive, but then they are, they are not scaling it. So if they don't work, then they are dying. So uh, if I'm, I'm not sure whether you listen to the episode where uh, Sino from Nitty 50 Sounds familiar, sounds familiar. Yeah, he he's an owner of the production company and he told me that uh the, you are not scaling your business, uh you are just like you are just an artist, you're not really a business owner because you are not hiring people to do the groundwork. So if you don't work, then you are dead. So when I when I listen to that, yeah, I said that that's true. Uh, like 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. I'm am I still gonna run this thing by on myself or am I gonna get a team of people or at least like two or three people to just help you tank a bit of stuff like you know if, if i'm not good at sales i wouldn't want to if i can i would still want to get like a salesman to draw the sales for me then if i'm not good at editing then maybe uh, maybe i'm good at editing but someone that's better came along in my path i would rather let him do the editing because you know that he will bring much more value as to compare to me editing the work so i think as a creative you need to know how to let go like let people do the work if they are better lah. so you pay for what you get so you, you get them to come on board I think that's very important as a business owner yeah, yeah. so it's making of making use of your resources that's available right now to yes. you. not just for yourself but in the future you know just you know, if it's anybody that's great along the way that's able to help to you know um, tank a bit of your workload that would be nice and it's a great addition to, to yeah. you as being a boss lah. and um, right now from what I've understood is that uh, for because we just recently rebranded Heart to Heart Stories. Uh, previously it was Yen Song videos, but I don't know if it still is, but <laughs> technically it's still technically it's still Yen Song videos, but well, now it's just much more like the Heart to Heart Stories. There's, now there's a story behind it and I'm very happy that you did your rebranding about it. And it looks very fresh, it looks very new and I, I really love it a lot. Um, but right now you are managing this Heart to Heart Stories with your wife. And um, so how is it like working with, with your wife actually? Uh, you want the real truth or, the, <laughs> or you want the... I know uh, there's a podcast, uh, I know there's a podcast episode. Someone is live eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it's, it's nice lah, it's always nice to work with your partner. Uh, for people that don't have the chance to do so, uh, too bad lah. But I feel like if you have a chance to work with your partner, if anything, uh, especially business, uh, do try. Uh, it's something that is very refreshing to the relationship uh, but it might not be for everyone then I tell you first disclaimer it might not be for everyone because some relationship right, just cannot work together they can be the best of partners for life but when they work together right, they are just tearing each other apart so yeah. take note of that but you know still try but take note of that yeah <laughs> okay but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of challenges that you have faced, uh, but is, is there one that you can remember so far? You mean challenges? Uh? Yeah, do, is there one that you can remember up top of your head? Okay, uh, I'm a very, uh, I'm very focused on my work. So when 
you know, when it comes to a wedding day or something, I'm quite strict with what I want. So I would actually tell her, tell my my my, my partner beforehand, like uh, certain things that uh, I would need. Uh, I think she's watching right now, so I have to be very careful what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just save us. Uh, but what, what I'm trying to say is like, uh, there'll be certain things that I'm quite strict with. So if I don't get my shots and uh, you know, I know that there's a little bit of hiccup, uh, my face can can tell that I'm not very not very happy. Lah. And sometimes I treat it, when I'm shooting a wedding, I treat it as a colleague rather than a partner. I think that's my that's my own issue. Uh, you need to know that when you're working with your partner, she's still your partner. Uh, though she's still your co-worker, but you need to make sure that, that is, your line become very grey. You, know, you, can, you can't really treat her like how you treat a, a, uh, like a low, lower tier co-worker. But you still must respect her as a partner. So you have to play a fine line between that. You just need to make sure that you, you don't want to go back home with a black face. Lah. So try to get the communication out first. And that's why I say when you work, we are working together, right, your communication your communication between each other improves a lot. Really a lot. You, you think your normal com- life commitment is like the communication is important, right? When you work together it's even more critical. And because of that, right, it helps our relationship a lot. Though we had to go through a little bit of like rough patch and stuff, but it did help our relationship a lot. Like we, we are forced to communicate, even if you're not happy, you really have to communicate. You know, it's a whole thing of all, but and it's super ugly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, your whole like heart-to-heart stories is, is with your wife and I'm, I'm really amazed, by, I'm really inspired by how your dynamics working with you and your wife. It's, it's so lively and it's so, so approachable at the same time. And it's like, if I don't just see you, I, I see your wife as well. And I, if I see your wife, I see you. So I think you, you guys are just a perfect team together. And it's really wonderful to see how you guys really work together as, as a team. Uh, but um, now coming to, to you and your wife, um, how do you guys meet each other? Uh, because I understand that your wife is a, a Burmese, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, we met through an army friend. That's nice to be talk about talk about this because uh, I just posted it yesterday on my uh, Hatua. Uh, we we met through uh, uh, army friends in Chola because after you know uh, every man had to serve their army, then we went to the POP parade. So that night we had a supper with all the guys. So uh, one of the army guy brought her along, or technically she tagged along uh, because she wanted to. She said she she mentioned that she wanted to just hang out. So she, she came along. Then that's where I first met her. That I still remember it was under my void deck. Because we were supposed to meet under under my block. And that was um I almost didn't want to go because I was very tired. Because after the 20, 24 click road march and everything. I just want to okay. chill. Then but my friend who was staying, my friend right now who is still staying in the same block as me, uh in in uh in Bedok, was like, hey, just go lah. Because we, we both went to the army at the same time and we POP and we are in the same company in in, uh, in the Kong. So he was like, hey, let's go lah because everybody already there. Then, then we just go down. Lor. Then that's where I first met her. If I didn't went down with him, right, I wouldn't have seen, seen my partner. Already. So uh, for that, I'm very thankful for both of them. Yeah. So you should really thank your friend a lot lah. Yep. <laughs> a lot. So without your friend, you won't be your wife la. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay. that's why he, he he will be officiating next year. Yeah. Oh really? That's that's yeah. great. That's great. Yeah. Oh, but the point is we haven't told him yet. <laughs> we really so he know is it true? So we know through this podcast like do we? Yeah. That'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. That'll be that'll be quite interesting. Uh. But okay. Anyway, um so you uh how many how many years have you been working with your with your wife so far? I think it's about two, three years you, right? Oh wait, uh, it's about you mean about uh, one, how long I start the production? Yeah, production with her. So it's about about two years for now, right? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the challenges like uh, shooting? Um, because you see that you're doing previously you're doing a lot of like wedding and photography as well, right? So what what's the the challenges you know, shooting for this kind of event? Um, the challenge is you might get overwhelmed by the pace of the 
of events like because it's happening like so fast everything is like bam 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 but because i came from uh, i second shoot for weddings and stuff so i'm, I'm very used to the pace if people okay I, I would say the easier version of an event will be a normal corporate event because everything is laid down easy then the next higher the harder part is actually weddings because wedding events is unpredictable and it's always changing yeah, everything definitely. is happening at the same time uh, when downstairs they are doing the games upstairs will be doing the bailing uh, do you want to take control of such things and I, I think I prefer to swing towards I think corporate side is quite easy la. I, I, but at least personally for me I think it's quite straightforward just to talk to your clients more see the whole timeline plan ahead um, make sure that uh, if you want to mic someone up make sure who you know to contact uh where you should tell him to go. If you're plugging on that mixer, uh, who should you find? Where's the DJ guy? Is there a person in charge? You need to know, do you do all this homework before you go to the actual day? So when you yeah. go there, you'll be like, hi, I'm Yin Chong, you really know me, I message you. Uh, I'll be plugging your mixer if that's possible. If, if you can't, it's okay, we will try to work something out. Uh, I think these are the challenges along the way. Uh, it's really about talking to people. If you don't communicate, then you go to the place, you'll be very lost. Yeah, but for weddings, the challenges is really anticipating. Like, do you know when to take what? Do you know uh, when you can take certain shots? Because when I just started filming weddings, right, I don't know where to aim because there's like a lot of things to do. So yeah. after you shoot a while of second shooting, you kind of like know the main shooter's style or their vibe. Then they will like, they will kind of tell you, okay, I want tight shots. So you're gonna figure out how you're gonna shoot tight shots. And that's where I'm trying to figure things out along the way. But uh, for events, communication with your clients is very, very important. Uh, in, and again, it's not about equipment. Uh, yes, equipment make your life a little bit easier, but getting more equipment will make it more complex. Because yeah. though it makes your life easier, but then now you have like 10 equipments to figure it out. And as a one-man show, you need to make sure that uh, you are yeah, only carrying a one-man show's worth because you can buy a lot of equipment, but can you use it on one event? Or not? And if you can't, then just don't bring it. Like you need to know, you need to balance like... Because uh, I, I myself, I, 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 I did one shoot that I hold a 7200 with uh, APS-C. So okay. it's super huge, it's like a missile. But of course smaller than a full frame size. But when I hold it, yeah, I will slink it to my body, you know. How I shoot it was, I do even have a monopod because I find that it's too waste of time because if you want to have a remote port you cannot have two cameras so I didn't have a wide lens cam on a gimbal then I have a 7200 lens that I hand hold but I anchor with my strap and I zoom in and that's how I stabilize the shot so um, sometimes hire more people better lah. one thing is really hire more people if you yeah, need more, it's more, more person just hire yeah I think another thing that I I tend to reject or decline any like event photography or wedding photography or, or doing the videos for them is that it's really challenging because I cannot do it uh, I cannot do it alone because I know that if I do alone especially if I miss certain shots that's it you know you'll be gone and you'll you'll be you know somebody will blacklist you because if you Try miss certain life. shots people people will people will remember the mistake for, for life, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's this kind of mistake that I, I cannot afford to make and I'm really scared. I I, I overthink a lot, even though... I, I overthink a lot, actually. So, like, uh, before I go for certain shoots here and there, I must know everything before I go for it. But even if I know everything, there's always things happening at the same time. So I cannot sit down and, like, really digest every single information. And I need time to digest information. So... Uh, events and uh, weddings is totally not for me and I've tried events before uh, I would say that it's a struggle for me because I, I panic a lot also so if something doesn't go in my way I would panic a lot and I'll overthink and that's oh. when the spiral continues yeah. so I prefer to have a coordinated shoot instead I think I really have much more fun from there because I control everything and I know what, what's right or what's wrong before that and I, the mistakes that I can make for these shoots is very minimal and I know that um, this has been calculated back in my head already. So this is the kind of things I, I like to call it as a calculated risk. 
and I I really enjoy doing coordinated shoots more than you know, doing street interviews or doing like events or, or doing weddings. Sometimes corporate I'm okay, but corporate depending on what kind of uh, shoot it is. So I, I'm quite specific on what I take as well. So if there's if there's a way for me to plan things, I don't mind. But if I can't plan anything and it's have to be based on reactive or based on adaptive, I usually tend not to take account uh, shoots as well. So it's not healthy for my mind because like I said, I tend to overthink a lot and I tend to worry a lot. So it's not fun for my brain. But but I think this kind of this kind of uh, shoots makes me stronger. Like. At the end of the day, I try to take a big hand there, but not very big scale kinds. You know? yeah. I think something you didn't know about uh, shooting events or general like the creative business, right? Uh, perfection is impossible to attain. Uh. Yeah, because that's why. events is too unpredictable already. There's no way you can attain perfection. I would say that you can increase your insurance by putting things that you can control. Like, that's why you say that if you can't control certain shot, right? Then tripod, a lot of tripod is the best friend. Tripod yeah. on, on the stage, uh, 7200, nailed it on the thing. No one can run away from the podium. Right? So you know that's safe. And once you know that's safe, what can you shoot? Close out of the people watching, then the full view, the wide. You know, like there's a few ways you can play, lah. But uh, I, I, I would say that keep calm. Think yeah. of the possible shots. Okay, now you know you're shooting this already. What else can you shoot? It, it shouldn't be like oh, because okay, unless someone bump into your tripod, then your whole camera is just smashed on the floor. Ah, that's where you panic. Wow, but, that one will panic. Yeah, that's 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 where you panic. But if if you can't get certain shot, it's okay because you need to know it's just a highlight. Uh, okay, I mean, if it's a highlight, then good for you. Then you don't worry, like, just one more, small part. Unless you so, so you hit like, the part where it's the most important, then uh, then you have to explain to your client. Nah. You, you can't really rectify that, but you have to just... Okay, if you fuck up, right? Admit it, move on. Right? Admit it, say sorry, move on. Right? Like, uh, it can't be helped, you can't kind of help. Right? Like, we really did the best that we can. Then it's not like you on purpose, you go and corrupt the file or something. Like, you... You did your best to check everything. Just make sure that you do your part. You do your homework. Then when you are facing the client, you won't feel so guilty. Because, uh, like what I said, events is just like that. You have to accept that it is, but you have to prepare for all the circumstances. Whatever that can happen would happen. So you just make sure that you have everything covered from your audio. Do you have a spare camera? If one camera is down, do you have a spare? Never ever shoot even one camera. That's suicide. Yeah. That's confirmed Diane. So, Make sure that you have spare cam, you bring all your spare stuff, spare battery, spare memory card, everything spare. Lah. If you have spare, just bring. If you don't, cannot afford to rent. Because I feel like renting is your best friend at the first year of your business. It saves a lot of money, it really saves a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's really great advice. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. So, uh, okay, uh, now just ending off this, this segment, uh, just talk about. Um, about how you talk, uh, how, how do you like find clients in the first place? But I mean, you, you kind of work with a lot of couples already, right? Uh, I'm assuming that uh, like dozens of, of couples and I'm pretty sure you have done a lot of successful shoots for them. And um, you have to, you know, plan for, you know, the shoots at like each location, like, uh, you know, what's the perfect, you know, outdoor location and indoor location for them. You know, um, now, now that you have worked with so many um, of this kind of, uh, shoots already is do you have your own specific uh ideal uh, perfect date location for 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 couples out there or singles out there if they want to have a date or whatever a date lah. yeah ideal date you mean a wedding it's based date. on the experience no uh it can be a wedding date or it can be just a simple like uh, a couple date or it can be just for a date for you know just or relationships or anything, I did for anything, so yeah. Uh, Based on my experience, date? or as in the physical date, like a uh, physical date, sorry, yeah, a physical date, yeah. Uh, because now that yeah, uh, you have worked with a lot of couples and they always tell you, Oh, I want this location because this location means a lot to me, and oh, I want this location because yeah, you can't okay. get what I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess. I would just say location because uh, I don't really know what, what date is about. Uh, I would say the location is depend on the couple. I don't like to set the location for them. Partly also because I believe in uh, special places where the couples hang out. 
I would rather shoot my cafe or kopi tiam where the couples have special memories as to compare to uh, for example uh, Jurong Lake Jurong Lake Park Coney Island like this is the oh, two Jurong yeah this is the two most famous uh, 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 people have been shooting there for for two years already I think a year and a plus uh, it's like it's like the hot spot for couples yes you can still take there it's not wrong it's just that everybody take there your shots will become very really <laughs> template so I would tell them yes we can shoot still there if you want but I would still say what are your dating spots is there any special place that have special meaning like recently I have one couple we haven't get to shoot their pre but they, they say that oh they know each other from primary school uh, they know but they, 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 they know each other in primary school but they are not very close then I was like hey that's a good place like you know uh, there's special meaning to you just write to the school then you can go there and shoot like you know they, you have a special oh, memory they give, they give permission for that yeah you need to write to the school you need to write tell the couple to write to the school then the school will like see whether you are alumni then if you are alumni then okay they, they shoot like, like two hours or something like a weekend no one's in the school just get one of the classrooms and shoot like, and I feel like this has much more meaning as to compare to getting some random location. I mean, unless the couple is like, ah, we, we do really don't have a spot. Please help us choose a spot. Then of course, I'll choose somewhere that is guaranteed nice. Like recently, we shot. So, so what's the location then? If you really want, uh, as much as I hate it, Coney Island is one of them. Coney Island, oh. Jurong Lake, uh, Gardens by the Bay. Recently, we shot one. We don't even need to pay money. It's outside. It's at the free, the, it's called the Golden Lake or something, like Lily Pond or something. You can just shoot oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah! It's it's at the the bridge there, right? Is it? Yeah. So oh, yeah, okay, yeah okay, a, a, okay. a lot of the spots are hot spots, lah. So you basically just go go and find hashtag Instagram SG videographer SG photographer. There's tons of places for you to choose. Uh, but I I like more vintage, more more old school vibe. Like if I can find places that has like colonial house or something, yeah, that would that would make it so nice. Just my just just, just wow. my personal taste lah, personal taste. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 cool. That's cool. Have you done like overseas shoots as well? Sorry. Have you done like overseas shoots before as well? Uh, we want to this year. We almost got a chance to shoot in Korea. Uh, it was a style shoot, like a great style shoot. We were very excited to go, but then now with the COVID, uh, oh. our, our our plane tickets in uh, is in late June, so. I don't think we can fly anytime soon. Uh, so we might ask for an open date, maybe end of the year to shoot, or maybe we can get the refund, then we see how to. So so let, let, let's pray that we can go overseas by yeah. the end of this year at least. Because yeah. I even, I, it, I'm also excited. I already had the storyboard ready for, for oh the no. couple. So it was already like done, ready. Just need to go there and shoot. And we even chose the location. So everything was planned out quite well. It's just COVID. Screw up someone someone in China started the virus then screw up the whole world. <laughs> screw up the whole world in everybody, then now we come yeah. here. Yeah. Now now we all start at home. Yep. So, uh, but I can cannot blame that cannot just blame uh, but I mean it's really negligence as well. Uh, so there's a lot of factors that, that came out of this virus. Uh, but but again, uh, like I said, uh, just take care of yourselves, you know, just stay healthy, stay stay safe and stay at home lah. yeah okay anyway uh, before we end off this episode we are moving forward to this segment called the Insta Kopi segment which is inspired by Eastern Coffee so um, prior to this episode I have posted an Instagram story on my own personal Instagram account asking my followers if you have any questions uh, for for our guest which is Yen Tong and so if you have any future uh, questions for future guests that I'll be inviting. Do feel free to leave your comments. Uh, no, sorry. Do feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. If you're watching from YouTube or at our Instagram account at Limkopi Podcast. So one of my followers did ask you, uh, what's your favourite food? What's my favourite food? Oh, yes. Cai Peng. Cai Peng. Cai Peng is my favourite. The only reason is because it's so, so versatile. Like, you can change any dish you want. It's like you want uh, Teochew cuisine, you have one Hokkien cuisine. Most of the Thai fun store have all the things. So it's very versatile dish. You cannot just say like, oh, it just have meat. Oh, it doesn't have fish, it doesn't have veg. It has everything. So, and somehow it's economical. You can save money. Yeah. During this time, it's, it's cheap money, as so well. Yeah. Thai Peng is the best. 
So do you usually go to the coffee shop one or you go to the uh the food court one? <laughs> no, you should you, no, you should ask me whether do I order fish um uh in the Thai fun store. But uh yes, I buy in the coffee shop store because it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely way cheaper. But do you order fish actually? No la, so expensive. No way in hell. In in Myanmar, yes. One fish oh. is like six dollars. One whole oh, fish really? is like this big. Eh. This big. This this big? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Like, it's like a whole sure. like 30, 30 cm set. Uh, ruler long. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, hey bring me next time, eh? <laughs> If you can fly, now we can fly, so yeah. Yeah, but okay, but okay, uh, you're saying about Myanmar food, right? Burmese food. Um, which would you rather eat for life? Uh, Burmese food or Singaporean food? Ooh, tough, tough. Singapore yeah, your wife is what? watching. <laughs> Singapore. Anything or anything. Like, on the table is Singaporean food that means the Chinese cuisine, the Malay cuisine, and Indian cuisine, oh, the basic three cuisine. Then hands down Chinese as in Singapore dish. Because Burmese is just limited to that. But Singapore dish got four like, different cultural difference of dish. So of course it's Singaporean. Yeah. I hope your wife doesn't feel sad by hearing that, but sure. She confirmed what they <laughs> Singapore food and I can tell you that. Oh really? That's interesting. I'm pretty sure. No, later I finish the podcast and ask her. <laughs> <laughs> if you screw up, then I tell you all. Screw up. Okay, la, okay. La. Uh, now, another question that we have is that uh, why is your skin so smooth? What about? My skin why is your so skin so smooth? One of my, com- uh, one of my followers didn't ask me. Wow. wow. Yeah, I don't know what you did. <laughs> Okay, uh why my skin so smooth is uh I use I use water to wash. <laughs> I don't have like a facial regime like you know like yeah, they use facial foam and stuff. Uh basically sleep early. If you can sleep sleep more, like I feel like my sleeping routine has to be there. So that's why uh, maybe I look younger, I don't know. Yeah. How really is sleep. your sleeping schedule? I don't know, I I I've been sleeping like at least seven, eight hours a day, like it's a must. If I don't sleep that amount, I'll feel very grumpy and I can't function that way. <laughs> so I my recommendation is, like I, I because no, because I don't use any facial thing. I don't even use facial foam to wash my face. I use water and wash. So I feel like the only equation, uh, the only uh, element inside my whole complexion thing is sleep. Oh, like really sleep. Yeah, then you can get it. This face. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. 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 So uh. Just another last question that we have for you from our from my followers. Um, do you exercise and do you drink like two liters of water every day? Exercise, uh, is a half-hearted yes. Uh, I've been <laughs> swimming ever since I've been issued. So, uh, I've been swimming for every week once. Yeah, I try my best to be everyone. But now, ever since the curfew thing, uh, we just started the heat workout thing. It's a Wow, it's hard, man. I think it's hard. It's so easy. it's just a high intensity workout, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. like those tactics. Yeah, I just started uh, my Tabata first Tabata. session ever since the COVID lockdown or circuit breaker. Uh, yeah, I think I, 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 okay, so the first question is yes, I exercise. Second is voila, drink two liters. Uh, uh, no, I, I wish. I, I, this is about, I think, 800 ml, I think, 700 ml. So you get through the day by this. No la. I mean later still got drink la. I guess about one one point five. I don't think two is a bit too much. Mm, okay, so drink more water, drink more water. You know there was this once I, I tried to drink like uh four liters of water every single day and I did, but it's not easy la. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because I, I was I was being told by this fact that drinking four liters of water every day helps to clear your toxins in your body but also at the same time um helps to lose a bit of your weight. I mean, it kind of does because it kind of, um, it makes you bloated in a way because you're drinking a lot of water mm. but you don't um, make you feel like eating la, but it's not really a good way of losing weight but but keeping yourself hydrated, that's for sure. I mean, I was very hydrated. Actually, when I drank more water, I feel like drinking more and more water through each day. So, it kind of got me wanting to drink more water every day la. and I didn't really crave for any sweet drinks or or any uh, carbonated drinks uh, for, for that the period of time. Now. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, anyway, uh, let's, let's end off this episode. I mean, it's, it's quite long, about one hour already. Uh, sure. So where can, can our listeners connect with you online? 
Okay, um, if you're interested in the wedding site, then you can just go to Instagram and uh, find us at Heart to Heart Stories. Uh, we are there. Uh, we are quite responsive and we create content for our couples if you're interested to join us. Recently, we have this CB Stay Home Challenge. Uh, <laughs> you try to take your own photo shoot at home. So we did a video on that. You can just join us there. Uh, if not, you want to go to my website. Uh, it's ycvideos.com. Uh, I have corporates, I have weddings inside, feel free. Uh, I have the podcast inside if you're interested, it's all there. Yes, yes. We also podcast write blogs, well. so do join us there. Uh, other than that, yeah, you can. Yeah, these are the two main platforms, I guess. Yeah. So I'll, I'll drop the links in the description below and in this video right now. And yeah. you can actually just you know check it out. He does, a, he does a lot of amazing works and not just for the corporate side, the wedding side, and also his own personal co content creation side. I really enjoy watching, watching his videos really. So like even like he has this challenge right now called the CB uh, challenge, uh, stay home challenge. So just, just, just do something fun because it's a photography challenge. So like if you can do it, do it. So just have fun and you know, just just, just just do something productive for the, the rest of the circuit breaker period. Uh. Yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, we come to the end of this uh, episode of the Lim Kopi Podcast. Thank you so much, Yen Song, for joining me in this episode. Hey, thank, really you great. For, thank you for inviting. I, I love this session. I get to like, chit chat with you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Hopefully, I bring value. Time. Yeah, hopefully, I bring value to whoever that's listening. Exactly. If, if it's for you, then it's even better. Mm. No, I think not, 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 sorry, not just for me, but I think for. Uh, I think our viewers they are listening to this podcast. I think they are learn a lot of things about not just yourself, but also about us, and also about your your, your creative endeavors and your, your work life as well. I think it's a really interesting podcast so far. And I hope this will set the tone for the rest of the episode so far. I think we can do season two. High level, high level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no okay. stress. Thanks. No stress for your for your for your next next guest with this visual. And uh, this audio. I, I don't know. We, I don't know who we're gonna invite for the next episode because I haven't really planned for that yet. But I was hoping to get Stanley involved as well Ooh. because I was in talks with him um, about it. But he's nice. really a busy person, yeah. so it's not easy getting him. Yeah. But other than that, I have a couple of my own friends as well that that we're gonna um, invite as well. So we shall see. But it's an honor to have you as my first guest and being part of your podcast now that you're not part of my, my podcast. Oh. I give you this honor as my first episode guest. So thank you so much. Anyway, thank you, thank you so much for inviting me. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>